Hello, everyone. I'm Kat Withrich from Admiral Consulting Group. Just want to say thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar. I know many of you are our existing Dynamics clients, but for those of you who are joining us today for the first time, it's a pleasure to have you here. Uh, we are a New Jersey-based Microsoft Gold Partner, providing business management solutions to our clients uh, across the country and beyond. Uh, today, we've invited the lovely folks from Columo here to show you their reporting and forecasting solution. Uh, hopefully, today we can start to give you some good ideas about how you can improve visibility into the critical data around your distribution business uh, and how to leverage that data to streamline your product delivery. So that's our goal for today. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Warwick Leach from Columo. Uh, he has extensive experience implementing the Kalumo corporate performance management solution uh, for Dynamics clients like you. Uh, so with that, Warwick, I'm just going to turn the webinar right over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Kat. Really appreciate that. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Warwick Leach from Kalumo, and I'm going to take you through um, getting visibility, a good handle on your data um, in your distribution business or, or any other business for that matter. Um, but the focus is, is distribution. Just a handful of slides here just to get us all on the same page. So, so why are you here? It, it's normally because you've, you don't have visibility into your data. What does that mean? Um, another word that's often used is transparency. You might have a profit and loss. You might be able to see some sales numbers at a high level or even at the detail. But it's more about that analysis, that what if, that how does this compare to that number crunching that people often find themselves in Excel. Um, trying to answer those questions. And typically, you may not be an Excel guru, or maybe you are. Either way, you're spending hours of time in Excel, and you don't need to be. Um, and that's expensive. You're an expensive resource. If you're an employee being paid, or you're a company owner uh, trying to manage your organisation, spending a lot of time in Excel can be very expensive when it can be automated by by uh, computers and machines. So, so that's hopefully why you're here today. The other reason might be uh, you've already got a system, maybe it's a little older, maybe it's new and you wanna validate and make sure that what you're doing is maybe industry standard um, and uh, perhaps there's some improvements and some takeaways that you can you can actually add to your existing system today. So that's typically um, uh, the reasons for people coming along. Um, uh, now, the primary reason is you you know we're in a pretty dynamic environment at the moment. Um, so you need to be able to uh, change your business fast and, and be agile. And data is really, really important for making that happen. Um, I've already mentioned, you know, getting data together in Excel is painful and takes a lot of time. The other thing you don't want to do is um, be in this data warehouse project that's taking months and months. You want to be able to create some quick wins. So how do you how do you get visibility or or transparency into your business? Um, from your data. You need software. Uh, CPM software is really, really good for it. Maybe you just need dashboarding tools like Power BI, for instance. Um, the problem I have with uh, a pure dashboarding tool is coming from a CPM uh, background. The first thing I want to do once I've got my data um, together, I want to start forecasting. And without a CPM tool, you're back in Excel again. Uh, and that's not very useful um, because you're got some nice data in a, in a BI tool, you're extracting it back into Excel, you're doing calculations and entering data, you've got spreadsheets being emailed out to people and received and people are changing your spreadsheet, it's not linked anymore. Again, you're spending a lot of time back in Excel when all of that can be automated. So if you can get a tool, a CPM tool, Corporate Performance Management Tool, that does BI, so your dashboarding, reporting, which is typically your, your profit and loss balance sheets, sales reports, things like that. Analytics, slicing and dicing of data. And then your planning, that's budgeting, forecasting, what if analysis, scenario analysis, all in one tool. That's going to give you everything you need to drive your business forwards. An important point, Kat, um, that, that people often forget is getting visibility into your data shows you your historical results. It's like when we used to open the paper and get yesterday's race results or see yesterday's news, um, it tells us where we went. Um, it's like looking backwards in a, in a boat or a ship. You can see 
where you went in the water, but you really want to be looking forwards all the time. I was reminded of a, an analogy the other day, another analogy. <laughs> um, when you're driving your car, you have a very, very big window to look out of the car. In fact, you have side windows as well. But you only have a small rear view mirror to see what's behind you, basically where you've been and perhaps what's coming up behind you. Uh, with, with BI tools, they are that rear view mirror. They're just giving you information about where you've been, not where you're going. So you really want to broaden your horizon with a CPM tool. So that's really, really important. Um, add into that mix artificial intelligence, helps you start seeing around corners as well. So it's some pretty interesting um, technology that is available today. Secondly, you need a plan. Uh, you need to know what you want to do, what information you want to get. I strongly, strongly recommend taking a small project, bite-sized chunks. If you can do something in two to four weeks and have results at the end of that, maybe six weeks, maybe one week, shoot for that first. Don't boil the ocean. Let's just do something small, knowing that you can add on more data into your environment as you move along. And a good CPM tool like Kalumo lets you do that. You also need the right people. Um, you've probably got those people in your organisation today. It's rare um, unless uh, it's a multi-billion dollar organisation. It's rare for a company to need to hire a new person to manage the CPM tool. The reason for that is CPM tools today are very easy to manage, typically managed by an accountant or a finance person or FP&A uh, director or manager. Um, so typically it's a business user and it's not IT. Once it's set up, it's driven by the users. Now you might get new products, new accounts, new divisions, things like that. Should all be managed by you, the user, and very, very quickly and automatically ripple through to all of your reports anytime you get a change or input templates. So that's an important note. Um, I'm going to jump into a demo right after this, but I, I just want to make a note, make a point here about Kaluma and why it's different. Um, you can see on this picture, we've got some really happy people over there. And they're really, <clears throat> really happy because they're able to get all of their data from their different systems. That's an, another thing that you often end up in Excel, crunching a bunch of numbers from a bunch of different systems. But what Kaluma does is it brings all of that data into what we call a cube. You may have heard of data cubes um, before, but the technology has been around for over 30 years now. And it's a little different to your traditional relational database, where you, the way your data is captured in your point of sale systems, distribution and logistics systems, your accounting systems. They're all stored in relational systems that are great for capturing data not so good for reporting and analyzing and things like that. You really want to get that data in, in a cube or an in-memory table form and in memory as well. So you get really, really fast response. Sometimes it can be a thousand times faster than um, a non-cube tech. And you need that when you're looking for visibility and planning ahead uh, in your organization. So that's an important point. Now, you may notice that the line from the cube, this arrow is bi-directional. So that, that means I can view data. If I want to tweak a forecast, maybe change a ratio to, to change my forecast, it'll flow back into the cube as well and give you and others around you, your, your uh, core users, your team, your managers, your boss, whoever it is, or bosses, the board even, visibility of what's coming. Um, and you can have multiple scenarios there. So that's important. What I'm going to focus on today in the presentation is showing you some of the capability um, of looking at that data once it's distilled into a data cube. There's a number of ways of doing it. I'm going to focus on the BI component. So I mentioned earlier there's BI, business intelligence, dashboarding. Um, the name's evolved over time. Uh, there's also the slice and dice analytics, the reporting, so on and so forth. Today's session's really, oh, and the planning. Like I said, that's super important. Today's session's just about the dashboarding. So let's take a look. So what I'm going to do here is go over to Kalumo. Now I'm using uh, Chrome to access my data. That's Google's Chrome. Uh, you can use Safari, you can use Firefox, and you can use uh, Microsoft Edge. Um, it also means you can use your cell phones to access data and your iPod, uh, iPads and you know, it's really 
It's the only device people use today. Apparently, the Kindle Fire works fine as well. Um, but today, I'm just using my standard uh, Windows PC uh, or laptop and using Chrome. I've already logged into my Kalumo environment. And you can see down the side here, I've got access to cost centers and entities or companies and different time periods. I've got my standard reporting and planning. I've got a finance dashboard. I'm going to focus on this sales and distribution dashboard and give you a little run through it. So what it's doing is it's loading up the dashboard and connecting up, checking my security. It's loading all of my data out of my data cube. It's a direct feed to the data cube. Um, and anytime I make a selection here, it's always going back to the data cube. What this means is if, I'm, if I do have people forecasting, I can see that update automatically. Maybe that's not the right thing to do because you want to let people finish their forecast before you start viewing the data. But if I'm doing my forecast or my team's doing my forecast and I do want to see it happen, then I can see it through this dashboard. Also, if I've got real-time or near real-time data flowing through into my Kalumo cube, I'll see it popping up here as well. But let's take a little tour. So I've got some, start at the bottom, strangely, I've got a whole lot of tabs down here. I'm going to take you through some of those tabs. Um, and, and this is just an Excel-like interface with these tabs. But it's very easy uh, to navigate. Now, I could have had all of my um, tabs down the page. The choice is yours. I've kept it simple. I've said, hey, let's have a sales and distribution dashboard, and then people can uh, peruse these pages as they choose. Let's take a look at this. So we've got sales by region, by category, and product line. Um, I've got some high-level KPIs, my sales, costs, profit, margins, etc. cetera. Uh, across the top, I've got these selectors. So I've got fiscal year. I'm going to focus on 2012 for now, and we'll watch this data change. And what's happened is as I click, the dashboard goes back to the data cube and says, give me data for 2012. Now, interestingly, when I click on 2012, it's going to give me a summary of all years. And you see that's very, very quick. Drill on 2012, and it gives me that detail. So it's a gentle drill. Typically, you would want to select a year at a time. But there's sometimes there's analysis, and I'll show you in another page, where you want multi-year uh, views of data. Um, so next, I can pick a, a territory. Let's go with North America. Uh, and then I've got my sales by regions. Now, there's a whole lot of visualizations available to you in tools today. Um, and there's different schools of thought about visualization as well. These are some cool donuts. Some, some would say that pies and donuts are not a good visualization tool because, for instance, it's kind of hard to see what's going on in here. But I don't want to focus on those. So if I really want to draw people's attentions to the large items, then a donut might make sense. So let's check Southwest here. When I click on Southwest, all of the other charts, sales by category, product line, and even this chart down the bottom changes automatically, it just displays data for Southwest region. So this is January, and if I mouse over, I've always got information at hand, visibility into my data. So I can quickly see for January my sales amount um, uh, and the highlighted amount there as well. So the sales amount is for all uh, regions. The highlighted amount is for Southwest. So it's giving me a relative amount, that highlighted amount for Southwest division compared to everything else. And it's a, it's a reasonable chunk. I can do the same here for, for Canada, and that'll change accordingly as well. We can see it moving through. So uh, this chart would also change here. We can see that the, the, the smaller inner ring of the donut will give us information about data for Canada. Now I can click off or click on Canada again, and it takes me back to the original view. Um, if I go back to Southwest, we'll notice these KPIs will change as well based on my selection. So I can very quickly get access to the data I need. Click on North America, I get a full consolidated view. So it's pretty easy to navigate. So that's just one example. This margin one's pretty cool. Um, so again, same sort of layout. It's nice if you can lay your primary selectors or slices, as they're also known as, in the same place on all reports. Not always achievable, 
but it does make for a nicer um, end user experience. You can see I've selected 2012 and that's kept that selection. This particular report will start breaking things down by uh, reseller and, um, or by channel rather, so internet versus reseller. And then different styles for our different product lines. So if it's clothing, I could break it down into men's, and we can see that data changes. Very, very little data coming through for men's, which is kind of interesting. It's mostly women's and unisex. Uh, so let's move on to cost of sales. Same sort of thing as margin, um, just a slightly different view. We're looking at cost of sales versus margin. Sales territory here. This is pretty neat. I really like this chart, this information. Now, you'll notice I've lost the slicer area. That's okay. It's actually moved to the left, just to give you a different feel to some of the options that you've got when it comes to displaying the reports. I like this left-hand feel. It gives me a lot more real estate from my dashboard to play around with because I've got smaller selectors. You'll note here I've got my years in that small box versus this larger selection panel on the top. So let's go back here. Now, this is a pretty cool view. So this gives me um, my total sales by territory per the, uh, the report title and, and this chart title for a particular year. Let's hold down control and click a few years. And this is actually broken down by quarter. And you can see the data flowing through giving me a better view. This is a, a great example of a multi-year view where you do want to select more than one year. So we can see here that North America sales, and as we move through, I'm getting that different information coming through, I can focus still and see how it, the mix looks. There's that particular quarter for that year, quarter three, and that sales uh, coming through. Now, the, the, the margin one's the interesting one. Um, because we've got some dips in margin, and we might want to do a little bit of a little bit of research. So I just clicked on reseller, I unchecked reseller, and I can see that my gross profit here, and there we go, gross profit for those different regions. See the region changing. So North America, we get a dip in gross profit. So let's focus um, here on North America. Uh, we'll just do this. I know we click there. Yep, that's it. Um, actually, not North America. My mistake. We want to focus on internet. Well, internet sales are actually pretty good for North America. Most of the time, yeah, even here. Well, it must be reseller, our reseller network that's giving us some pain and agony. Yeah, we're making some losses here. And we can see over here when these losses happen. So this is a gross profit waterfall chart. Um, and we can see we're, we're making some money and there's a big dip. We're back in a gross profit and there's a dip. So we do actually come ahead a little bit, but we've got these big hits. What's going on? Um, well, we've got some other reports to help us uh, look at that data, but we can see these, these big chunks happening in North America over here. Um, now, I could do some further investigation. I can drill down into bikes and I can see, well, yeah, bikes take a hit. What about clothing? Clothing's actually pretty good, but there's not a lot of money in clothing. Um, let's check components out. Let's see if we get a hit there. No, it's all in bikes. So straight away, we're getting some, some great visibility into our data. So now I've got mountain bike, road bike, and touring bikes. And I've got a couple of different ways to slice and dice this. Well, we can pick mountain bikes. Yep, taking a hit. Road bikes, wow, not so good. Touring bikes, yeah, that's, that's really quite lumpy. So it looks like our internet business is helping prop, prop up our reseller business. And maybe that's okay. So if I unselect those two, unselect bikes, um, maybe that's okay. Maybe we've got a business model that we're running right now where we really want to focus on our internet sales, but we want to help bring our resellers through um, and, and we're, we're spending a little extra, we're giving extra away um, to help build their businesses up. So perhaps it's okay. And overall, we're doing all right. Or we might say, you know what, the reseller business just doesn't make sense for us. So we're going to change and just focus on those internet sales. 
um, so we can very quickly get that information. Um, this is a very similar report, but by territory. Um, we can focus on margins now, um, and I've got these, these multiple years selected, so we'll just go and pick 2012 again, and we'll look at internet, uh, sorry, reseller, and we can see we've got those big drops over here in these different periods. Sales channel is going to be a similar report. Um, this one's kind of neat. This will actually compare our internet sales by region with our reseller sales by region. And we can see we actually move less product overall uh, through Europe, et cetera, than we do through our resellers. But we are giving some margin away here. So perhaps we need to realign uh, our contracts um, and maybe there's a particular reseller that we're focused on. There's drill down capability here as well. I'll get to that a little bit later. But maybe there's a, a, a particular reseller that we, again, we're investing in to, to help them grow. Um, then there's a product comparison, another, another cool uh, report giving us all that detail. The one I really like is this margin trend report. Um, this is very, very cool report. Now, the way it works is I've got my selectors across the top. So let's go ahead and pick North America. And we'll see those, some of these bubbles move and disappear. Um, and let's pick reseller. And again, we'll see things move around. Um, now, North America is made up of United States in this model. And we can drill down into states as well. But in this model, it's United, Amer uh, United States and Canada. So this dot's Canada, and this dot is um, United States. Now, it's really interesting. Uh, this is our margin percentage at 0%. And if I uncheck reseller, it changes. And if I go to internet, we have nothing below 0%. Let's just focus on reseller for now. Um, now, I'm going to hit this play button. And what this does is it gives us a sense of volume across the page and um, our gross profit margin going up the page. And if I mouse over, the size is um, the sales amount. So a big circle is good as long as uh, we're moving a lot <laughs> and, um, and we're getting some good margin out of it. So, so that was kind of interesting seeing that move along. But I want to look at road bikes here, and I really want to follow the path of road bikes. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can move this slider. So look, that's October. Road bikes are doing well there. September, well, it looked like it was trending well, but never quite got over that zero line. But this is really neat, that 0% line. I can click on this button and hit play. And what it'll do is draw a line for me and take me through the path over time of how road bikes were selling. So what was our margin? It's always just below zero, which, again, maybe it's okay, maybe it's not for the last year. Um, I can go on ahead, ahead and pick more years and we'll get, get more information, but one year is all I need for this. And we can see that flowing through pretty quickly. So it's a really nice way to, to visualise your data. Now, because I'm at the end over here of my timeline, I can click on road bike and give you my, my path. Accessories is all over the place. That's really interesting. Let's see how that goes. And it'll draw the line for me as well. This is a really nice visualization, particularly across time, historical time, to see how things are going. Now, if you imagine having a forecast in place and coupling this with a forecast to see how we predict this is going to fly. People may say, yeah, it's going to trend up or it's going to trend down or it's, it's going to have a, a similar effect to this because it's a seasonal product. That's where some really nice power comes into tools like Kaluma, where we can start using the, the data to not only see how we went, we can look at cash in the bank to see how we are today, we'll look at the P&L or the balance sheet, but how are we going? And that's the power of a tool like, a, uh, like Calumo. Um, that's all we've got time for today. Our next session, um, Kat, I'm hoping we can do one on some forecasting and, and couple these charts with some 
maybe some predictive analytics as well, some artificial intelligence, again, to help people drive their business forwards. That sounds exciting. We'd love to do that. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation today, Warwick. I know it was extremely helpful for a lot of our customers. Um, and we just want to thank everybody for attending and watching this session today. Um, we look forward to seeing you all again on that next uh, forecasting webinar.